Hello. Hi, everyone. I am Sonia Harrier. I'm Beauty Director at The Telegraph. Thank you so much for joining us today in what is the fourth session of Telegraph Beauty School in association with Latest and Beauty. Um, over the next 45 minutes, we will be take, talking to the cosmetic doctor, Dr. Wasim Taktuk, as he talks um, everything back to basics in terms of injectables. So we'll be covering anti-wrinkle injections, fillers, profilo, and everything you'd kind of need to know as a beginner's guide. So I am very excited to be joined by Dr. Wasim Taktuk, who is a um, real industry expert when it comes to all things injectables. Hi, Dr. Wasim. Hello. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me. Oh, no, it's so exciting. Honestly, we've had so many questions for this, um, for this session because it's quite a confusing thing, isn't it? Everything to do with injectables can be quite daunting. Um, so what would be great, actually, is if we could have um, maybe a little bit of a top line information from you. Uh, you know, what's the difference between Botox, fillers, profilo? You know, there's there's so so many buzzwords, aren't there? Yeah, so 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 um, I guess starting with Botox. So, so Botox is a brand name sort of as Panadol is to paracetamol. Um, and it's one of a group of, of, of treatments called neuromodulators or anti-wrinkle injections or muscle inhibitors. Like that's, you know, if you want to be really finicky. Um, and other, other ones included in that would be things like Azalur, um, things like Bocature, which in America is called Xeomin. And you may have heard of it recently because Gwyneth Paltrow was, uh, was, was talking about uh, it. Yes, I've heard of that yeah. one. So it's called Bocature yeah. here. So those are all one group of, of, of injectable treatment that's sort of derived from a, a bacterial protein. And when you inject it into the skin, it kind of makes its way to a muscle and blocks the nerve's ability to make that muscle contract. So in a roundabout way, so for example, if you were to put Botox in someone's forehead, when they raise their eyebrows, those lines would not appear because they wouldn't be able to move the muscle. So it's, you know, I don't like the word muscle paralyzer, but kind of that, that's kind of what it's doing. It's a short term, yeah. completely um, uh, non-permanent treatment and very, very popular. So that's kind of the toxin side of things. Um, dermal fillers, you'll probably hear more about because they seem to make their way into the press a lot more and, and, and not always in a good way. Um, and this is, this, is a, this is a gel that's injected into the skin. Um, it comes in different densities. It's made of hyaluronic acid, which is something that we naturally have in our bodies. Um, and it's sort of a water sponge. And when you inject this hyaluronic acid, it draws water into the skin and it plumps it up. So that's kind of filling the line as by the name. Um, and depending on the density, that the thicker the gel, the more it can lift. And the finer the gel, the more you put it in sort of intricate areas. So that's kind of your hyaluronic acid dermal fillers. Profilo um, kind of sits in its own um, category. So, so if you think of hyaluronic acid as, this is really odd, but as spaghetti, um, dermal fillers oh, are right. the really sort of sticky spaghetti that's sucked together. So when you inject it, they stay put because they're chemically stuck okay. together. Whereas the hyaluronic acid in Profilo is not stuck together. So when you inject it, it spreads through the skin. Um, in the same way, acting as a sponge for water, hydrating the skin and tightening it. So th those are the three, um, those are the bad boys. Yeah, they're definitely the ones that are bounced around a fair bit. Amazing. I mean, that's the thing, like you say, um, you only ever really see the bad cases of Botox filler in the, in the press. That is really, you know, you can kind of, spot from a mile if someone's had quite bad work done um and what's great about the work that you do is it, it the focus is very much on the kind of um naturally enhanced um uh injectables that kind of work with your skincare in a really sort of harm harmonistic way which is great um so what we'll do for all of the audience is we're going to take everything through um we thought the most simple way to do it is the different areas of the face, because I know we'll have loads of questions on, you know, Botox and filler, but for, you know, cheeks and for, for the lower face and also for the um, upper face. So what we're going to do is start with this area and work our way down the face and um, get lots of insight from Dr. Wasim on what you can do, what you shouldn't do, and when, when it's time to kind of perhaps not even consider it essentially. Uh, so let's start with the upper face because a lot of the questions and a lot of the pre-submitted questions we got were about kind of this kind of tired eyes look and that, you know, slightly droopy brows. 
Um, how can injectables help you in that space? So um, you touched on something really, really important, and, and um, which was that one of the treatment options that we're going to talk about today is actually not doing anything. Um, yeah. I think that ties in with just current times where we've all been a bit hypercritical um, of ourselves and looked at ourselves more than ever, spent a lot of time on, on these, these sort of Zoom calls, um, spent a lot of time at home in the mirror. You know, we haven't had time to sort of get dressed up and go out once in a while, which kind of breaks up how we feel about ourselves, really. Yeah. Um, and, and so one of the things, I know we're going to talk about all the treatments that I do and, and, and that are available, but just bear that in mind that I, I don't think that when we finish this, people should book an appointment. I, I do think that, you know, when we come out of lockdown and, and resume normal life, see how you feel yeah. about those things that were bothering you during lockdown. They might not really be that much of an issue. Um, so anyway, that was my uh, little side bar. Let's get back to, I digress. Let's go so back that's, to really, that's really important to know because actually a responsible practitioner knows when to not inject um and you know it's quite um trendy at the moment to kind of have injectables obviously um clinics and and beauty treatments aren't um resuming until the 12th of april but um i hear anecdotally from many sort of cosmetic doctors that you know their books are already packed full um for, uh, as soon as the doors open but um it's really nice to hear that actually sometimes it's probably not in your best interest and sometimes actually a really good skincare regime can can do do you know do, do wonders really can't it a million percent a million percent um, yeah so um so yeah let's, let's start, start with yeah. brows so so if we like we said we're going to divide the face into thirds and let's talk sort of eyes up to the forehead so i mean your most common and, and well-known treatment for this area is going to be your 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 anti-wrinkle injection with botox and um, this is, an, like we said earlier, it's an injection that's going to stop or reduce the amount of movement. So it's a treatment that can be used for the horizontal lines. And so you would inject that into the forehead and that would prevent your eyebrows going up. Obviously, the idea is to not do that. And if it's done subtly um, and, and delicately and inject in just the right sort of dilutions in, in the right point, you will still maintain that movement and raise your eyebrows. But those lines will just kind of be halted a bit and, and, and slow down in developing. Um, so that's one, that's probably one of the main things that we do there. And we also do that for this area, which is called the glabella, yeah. the, the 11s, which I think we all think we've got more now than ever because we've been squinting in front of cameras and um, you can definitely see that I need all of them. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, these lines between here, these are caused from contraction of the muscles above the eyebrows. Again, a really soft injectable would be, would be a, a, a toxin there. And that would reduce that movement, obviously, but not to make you sort of mannequin-like and expressionless. And those are the two main, main ones that we use um, in the forehead when it comes to toxins. But some of the things that we can do when we understand how muscles move and, and understand that, that with toxins, we can stop that muscle movement. If you look on that side here, and I kind of squeeze my eyes tight, you can see that my eyebrow kind of pulls down. And so one of the things that you can do is you can put some toxin along the eyebrow just underneath, and that will prevent the pulling down effect. So when we all feel that our eyes are sort of tired and like this, if you just want some yeah. toxin here and underneath the eyebrow, you're gonna get a very gentle brow lift. Um, really soft, it can be really, really subtle. Remember, less is more, always have a little bit with your doctor, always go back and see them. I see everyone two weeks afterwards. Um, and we'll add a little bit more if we need to. I think always start gentle and just see how much of a lift you get. Um, that's gonna last about three to four months. So it's something to think about if you do wanna go down the, uh, the toxin route, this is something that you're going to be doing three to four times a year. Uh, okay. So that's something to, to, to bear in mind when it comes to toxins there. And what is, what is um, sort of really refreshing to hear is when you see a lot, especially in the past kind of couple of years, about injectables being spoken about, um, it's almost become uh, you, quite commonplace to, to hear, oh, I'll have half a mil of this and half a mil of that. And, you know, almost you, you kind of need to leave the responsibility in the hands of your practitioner, don't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. And, 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 and when we talk about half mils, we're talking about dermal fillers because toxins are used are, are, are in right. units. So you'd be using units, but um, a good point, when we're talking about mills and, 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 and people seem to know or come in requesting volumes, you, the, number, the number of mills that, that, that is used for a filler treatment is not the concern of the patient. That's a far yeah. to figure out because you don't know that you need two mills. I might be able to achieve that with half. So, so, so don't yeah. get too bogged down thinking, oh, I need this number or this number, um, because it's incredible how much you can do with very, very little. So, um, and, and that's sort of fillers come in the syringes with the gel in them. Um, and, and that's the one that comes in, in, in the, the mill units. 
Regarding the forehead, some things that we can do with fillers um, is, 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 again, from the side, as, 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 as we get older, I like to say as time passes. As time passes, we, there are patches of our face that will have volume loss, almost in a chronological order. One of the areas right. that we lose the volume is in our temples. Um, yeah. and, 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 it's, and, you, and it's, now that I pointed out, you'll start looking at people's temples and be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can, it's, so, it's so bad. Um, but what you can do is you can very, very gently sort of reinflate the fat that's lost there by putting dermal filler quite deep down. That kind of helps that sort of con concavity that develops over time, but it also can actually create a bit of a lift. So you imagine the skin starts to lift up, it will start to create a bit of tension on the eyebrow. So that's another way of achieving a brow lift um, is by using oh, dermal yeah. fillers um, in this area. So that's kind of a, a few tricks that we can do up there. Is that more um, popular for um, a certain age demographic or when would you use Botox over filler for the, um, for the, for, for the forehead area? So, so, so toxin would probably come in a little bit earlier because you're sort of dealing with individual lines. The, the, the volume loss that's in the temples tends to be age related, but a lot of the times actually yeah. people, you know, again, it's important. I mean, I, I ask all my patients to, to bring me photos of them 10, 20 years ago, and I don't want the pretty ones from their wedding or from, you know, I want the mug shots that they wanted to delete where, you know, they, I can see where over the decades where the volume loss has changed. If someone never had temples, um, you're not going to go and inflate them. But if someone has got volume loss in their temples, then you're kind of, you're being true to their aesthetic. So you're sort of replacing just a tiny bit of volume that was lost that perhaps is contributing to sort of, you know, the, the, the laxity around, around here and, and creating a bit of a lift. Um, so I think there's definitely an age uh, component to it. But again, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a really tricky one. It's, it's a case by case basis. No two patients are the same. No doctor, you know, I know that there's trendiness for the, you know, the Kim K package and all these kind of things. It, it's my absolute nightmare um, to, to have conveyor belt patients. You have to look at each person individually. Um, and, and I, and I, yeah, I mean, that's kind of, yeah, I mean that, that's a around. great approach. That's a great approach, though, and that's when you. Um, I always feel like when you see someone who just looks really fresh and like they've had a good night's sleep, and you know that's when it's actually really great work because ultimately that's what we all want, isn't it? Just to look a little bit fresher, um, and not look like you've had loads of work yeah. done. You, you want your friends to say you look well rather than like, what's going on here? You know, so, so, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 totally. totally. So and, and the best work is the work that is undetectable, but not, I mean, not so undetectable that no one notices, but so, that someone feels that you feel refreshed or you've come back from holiday, or you've, you know, you, you're, you're rested. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we are getting asked lots of really great questions. I will, I'm leaving um, some space at the end to uh, answer some of the Q&As in the chat box, so I'm not ignoring anyone. Um, but what we'll do next, um, Wasim, is talk about this area. So that's quite an area that you can kind of shift quite a lot with injectables and change. So what is your general, um, or what are the types of treatments that you can have for this mid-face yeah. area? I mean, and I think I think this, this is quite topical at the moment because we're walking around, you know, with our faces covered. So our eyes yeah. are, are more important than ever. You know, so much communication happens in our faces, but now it's sort of resorting to, to this, the nuances and movements in the eyes when we communicate a lot of the time. So um, the eyes will be very popular and, and there's definitely been a, a, an increase in people wanting to have treatments around the eyes. Some of the things that we can do, so again, we go back to, to the toxins and, and use my cell phone. when you scrunch up your eyes here, you kind of develop these, these, these crow's feet, they're called, I, I hate that, uh, that term. But uh, <laughs> when, you inject, when you inject the toxin in the different areas where this muscle contracts, it's a circular muscle, it's like a pancake and the ends kind of contract okay. like this. So when you inject and soften it, then when you smile, rather than that happening, that happens. So it's still there, but it just softens it a bit. So toxin is, is probably the most popular treatment around that area. Other areas, other things that you can do is, um, and, and you know, you have, to, you have to be very experienced practitioners to these things, is you can actually take the toxin quite low down um, to here and soften some of the lines along here. Um, it's a trickier injection and, I, and, and someone who isn't trained in it shouldn't be doing it, but that's one of the treatments that we do do um, because you can because sometimes you know this can be softened but when you smile you can still kind of feel that there are horizontal lines just underneath the eyelid as well and that can soften that a fair bit and kind of open up the eyes a bit um so that's another I didn't realize that was an option yeah, um a a kind of top in under the eye yeah just it's 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 it stays sort of slightly on the outside but but a little bit closer than the ones for the crow's feet um but i think that the, the main one around this area that i think is so impactful is 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 it and it's called the teardrop so anatomically this is kind of don't take my eye yeah. 
Where's the camera? Uh, so it's from, <laughs> so I can't do it. So it's from the, the inner point of the eye to sort of the pupil. Um, and that's your, what's called the yeah. hypothetical teardrop. That's the groove that develops here. And, and what happens mm -hmm. is, as time passes, um, we, the, the fat that was sort of sitting up here kind of makes its way down. And so you can kind of get the development of this groove and it's, because it's kind of, it's slightly recessed, it almost creates a, a, a light trap. So it looks like it's a bit darker. Um, and so if you have dark skin around the eyes, pigmentation, whether it's genetic or, or for whatever it may be, um, that sort of recession, um, as it were, can add to that effect. So, so what you can do is add very, very small droplets of, of dermal fillers, so that's your hyaluronic acid, a very watery, watery uh, consistency, and put very tiny droplets just on the bone, sounds gross, but just along the bone here. And what that will do is, is bring that tissue just slightly forward. So when the light reflects off it now, it looks a bit lighter. Um, and that's, that's wow. a huge one at the moment. Um, and I use Redensity too, which is a, it's a Swiss brand and, and because they have something called glutathione in it. And glutathione is a really, really strong um, antioxidant and is very good for pigmentation. So that helps with the pigmentation component of it. But it's important to understand that that's not, that's not a treatment for the pigmentation. It just reduces the appearance of, of the groove yeah. and the shadow that's, that, that's created by it being slightly set back. Right, that's interesting. So just by um, almost filling out that hollowing, you're getting a bit more of a light bounce yeah. around the eye area. Um, and I suppose that immediately kind of just, uh, makes you look quite refreshed. Ah. That's my, my problem. Um, yeah, that, I mean, that's a great one. And that, and that will, and that, will um, that can last, I mean, I've seen it last over a year in people. Remember with the fillers, they tend to be, especially with the newer generation, they're, they're, the rheology and the way that they're, they're designed, they're lasting a lot longer. So, so, so you will last, um, you will, the question popped up, sorry, distract me. Um, it will last a, a little bit longer than your toxins. So you're going to have fillers a lot less regularly than you are going to have toxins. Right, okay, that's good to know. Um, and can you, would you have the treatments at the same time? So if you did want a real rejuvenation around the eyes, could you, for instance, in the same appointment, have tear trough with the filler and um, some toxin for the crow's feet, for instance? You, ab you absolutely could. Um, and, and, I, and I have done that before. I, I, I call it mesmerize. Um, and it's sort of like the combination. Um, but I, 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 tend, I, tend to, I tend to prefer if, time, if, if time, people have the time to split them, because I, I feel that sometimes you can't, you don't know what to attribute the results to. And so then you end up every time yeah. going in having this, these two treatments unnecessarily when actually it was the Botox, the, the toxin part that actually made the difference. And so I think it's important in the first one, perhaps to separate them and then further down the line, um, you know, you, you could, it's something that, that you could probably do in, in one set, in one seating. Okay. Um, okay, we've got a related question. Um, I will jump to all the questions at the end, but um, let's go to this one. What can you be done if your eyelids sag over your outer eye? Good question. So, so, um, as, as, as time passes, um, we do get volume loss up here in the forehead. And I actually, um, the skull um, starts to become much more convex. And so where it was plumper and, and lifted, you kind of get, yeah. the skull goes back a bit. Um, and so the skin and the tissues that were supported do tend to make their way down a bit. And you can kind of get this development of, of, of feeling of, of, of excessive eyelid, eyelid skin. One of the things that you can do, so, so there's obviously, the, it's like you can kind of do it in a scale, don't you? So one of the first things that I would recommend in this area is, is toxin. And as we discussed before, I would put some between the eyebrows and a little bit underneath the eyebrows, sorry, in between the eyebrows here and just on the, under, under the tips of the eyebrows to create a bit of a lift. And that might be all that you need. Depending, right. um, depending on, on, on how, how, how severe it is or how much it's bothering you, um, you can also put filler and you can, you almost create a shelf with the filler and you pop it. Um, can you see this is quite bright? I think you can see yes. it, um, here, right? So you create a shelf um, so that you're able to, um, to, to hook almost the eyebrow on it and that can lift it a bit. So that's one other treatment. And the third thing, I don't know if you caught earlier was, was the filler actually in the temples because that's actually going to lift up the eyes. Yes. Now that hasn't really answered your question because you asked specifically about the skin, um, but that's one thing that can remedy it slightly. Um, ultimately, if you have low hanging skin um, or you feel that it's excessive, it's a surgical um, procedure that would do that. It's called a blepharoplasty. Um, and, um, and you're going to just, it's almost like a little moon that's cut out at the very back of the eye. So the scar is actually quite tucked in a way and that can reduce, um, reduce the, the excessive skin feeling. 
Um, one thing that just came to mind, I had a light bulb moment, which is if you do feel that you have skin that's a little bit sort of lower hanging over the eyes, speak to your, your practitioner about this if you're going to have um, toxins in the forehead. Because remember, that muscle is your elevator. It's what's lifting your eyebrows. So if you then go and stop it from lifting, you're contributing to the problem. Um, and so, so it's something to think about. And, and one way of testing that is, is get someone to look at you with your eyes closed and close your eyes for 30 seconds um, and then open them. And if your friend says that your eyebrows start to lift up, it means that your eyebrows are actually needed to keep your eyes open. So if you do that, then don't have toxin up here. That's really That's interesting. It, oh, yeah. absolutely. I mean, it's, it's really interesting because, you know, it, it um, helps, I think, it definitely helps me to understand the anatomy of the face because, um, you know, you can't do one thing without affecting something else at, at, at some points. Um, what about the kind of cheek area, if if you've lost volume in the cheeks yeah, um, and the upper eye area here? So so I think, I mean, we, we definitely advanced from um, from the, so in, even in 10 years, I mean, the, the cheek fillers now have slightly yeah. been reined in. I think we all know what I'm talking about. There were times where there were some really overfilled in cheeks. Cheek fillers are really, really, really important, actually, when you think about the aging face. Um, because you are able to restore, um, aging happens on all the levels, right? So it happens on the bone, it happens on the fat, it happens in the muscle and it happens in the skin. So it, it kind of, and every, every effect has a knock on effect on the overlying structure. So one of the things that happens in, in our mid face is our bone, bring out him again. Um, that's kind of this mid face part kind of goes back. And so what yeah. happens with that is all these tissues that were sitting here, um, have sort of lost their support so that kind of starts to happen and you kind of get the develop, de development of these nasolabial lines um, and so mm. we used to go and fill those in when we first started and, and unfortunately everyone walked around looking a bit like that uh, but now we know yeah. better and now the technology of the fillers is better and and when we're able to put filler in the mid face in the cheeks we are able to create a really really gentle lift um, and it can be done really super subtly um, and in the right hand um, it should remain undetectable, but also the choice of filler is important here because um, this is a very dynamic area. And I think the problem with fillers in the beginning is, is people were sort of putting these gels in and we were assessing people, so sort of just looking at that picture, oh, look, they're great, they look younger and, sorry, older, younger yeah. side by side, but no one ever contemplated what happened when they started moving their faces. And so, so you know, the gel has to also be able to stretch and move and you have to mimic the natural function of your skin. And so the newer technologies of fillers are really true to our natural hyaluronic acid. Our, our natural hyaluronic acid is like long spaghetti. And some of the old technologies yeah. to chop it up and stick it together. And it wasn't very stretchy, but the newer technology is yeah. long, long, long spaghetti. And if you imagine these long, long strands and you're sort of smiling and moving and, the, and they kind of move and stretch with your face. So they're not as detectable as before. Um, so that's resilient hyaluronic acids. That's a, that's a new era of, 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 of filler, which I think is fantastic for this area. So, so cheek volume in men is different to women. Um, so we have to bear that in mind as well. We need to replace filler in different areas if it's a male or a female. But it's an excellent way to, to restore volume in the mid face, and it's an excellent way to almost sort of support the tissues underneath by 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 re refilling. I'm trying to think of the word by yeah. by by, by uh, replacing replacing the, the bony changes. So um, that's what we can do with fillers in that area. Not much we can do with toxins. Remember what toxins do. Toxins stop movement so the last thing you want to be doing in this area is stopping anyone's movement it's it's it's, it's vital that that's still moving i mean you shouldn't be stopping anyone's movement yeah. anywhere but this is you know all yeah. the muscles here are linked to the mouth and lift the lips so you know this is not an area to, to, to be messing with the toxins did that answer no absolutely that's great that's great so will that by um putting filler in the cheek area will that help these lines absolutely. the kind of nose to mouth absolutely lines? absolutely because because you're treating the cause of them uh, whereas before we kind of went right. line chasing, went straight in and filling. Now we're kind of, we're putting tiny droplets along here. And that's, you know, if I just bring my chair up, if I just do, uh, see that, just a tiny okay. little, you could just kind of, I think my, my beard's not helping, but just a tiny bit of tension there. You can see that it just kind of lifts um, the, 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 those folds. You can put it to put a tiny bit either side by the nose, quite deep down, but certainly the old technique where we used to sort of fan it along here, we, we don't really do that anymore. Um, and that's no critique on anyone. I did it too. It's, it's, it's that, that was, you know, that's the evolution of, of, of technology and science and understanding how these things work. So. I love that term you just used, um, line chasing. Yeah. So it, you know, it's not a case of, which is so interesting because it's not a case of it just being see a line, inject, see a line, inject. 
I think um, what's really refreshing to hear is that actually when you find a really great practitioner, um, you know, they know how your face is going to move rather than just looking in a picture and that's how your face is. Um, and what do you need to attack? It's kind of more about a bit of a nat more natural approach, which is, um, is, is, is really great, actually. Um, so would you need, um, would, would you use Botox anywhere around this area? Not really. I mean, the lowest you're going is underneath the eyes, the one I mentioned before. Um, it's important, yeah. again, like, you know, you have to see doctors who are trained in this or, or, or practitioners who are trained in this, because if, if the injection yeah. is hit too deep, they'll hit the muscle that, that, that sort of pulls up the lip. And so, you know, they're, 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 they're not without risks. I think that um, we're quite blasé about the treatment sometimes. But yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't be putting any Botox around here. Further down here in the job, we'll do, we'll do that in the next section. But but we, we yeah. put it here. Um, Amazing. Um, so uh, before we move on to the lower face, yeah. um, I understand. So Profilo is injected at some points in the cheek area. Um, it's become a huge treatment in the last year, you know, two or three years. It's really um, become so popular. What is Profilo and where would you, as a practitioner, inject it and what are the results you can see from it? So, so Profilo is, again, it's the same family of hyaluronic acids. Um, and um, remember, it's the spaghetti that isn't stuck together. So um, it's yeah. Italian and it's, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful treatment. I love it, especially for people who are terrified of injectables um, because yeah. it's not volumizing. It's not going to change the way you look. Um, what it's going to do is flood your skin with moisture. Um, but in doing so, it's been shown that it stimulates collagen and elastin um, in your skin. It bioremodels is the term that they use. And so it almost creates a sort of a, 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 a tautness to the skin. So if you have very, very fine lines, it can help with that. It can be used in younger people, but it's a really quite dramatic result in, in, in older skins as well. Um, and so it, it hydrates the skin and creates almost a tension, a tightness to the skin. It's not a lift. It's Anyone says to you, you're going to get a profilo facelift. It's not true. What you're doing is th just think about when you go and you have a really good facial, right? And your skin has that dewy, hydrated texture and it feels a bit plumper. It's that on steroids. Like it lasts, it lasts for sort of six months, you're going to get it. And that's two treatments and they're 28 days apart. And you're quite right. That is a treatment in this area. It's, it's the lower part of the face um, that it was, it was originally designed for and also the neck. Um, but it's had such great, great results in terms of helping with skin laxity that now we use it pretty much everywhere. We use it in hands, we use it in elbows, knees, tummies, arms, you name it, uh, we're using it. And it's, uh, it's proving to be a really, really beautiful treatment. The, the technique is to do two treatments, 28 days apart. That's the official protocol. I actually, I go a little bit off piece sometimes and, and I will do three. Um, I think that's proving, to, and I think I'm not the only one doing that. I think that sometimes you just need that last bit of oomph and it just, does it um, and it looks really really nice and it's it's like I said it's hyaluronic acid um, it's very it's it's very it's not cross-linked um, and and yeah it's a real it's huge isn't it it's it's really really um, it really it, is yeah. I mean I feel like when it first um, when I would first start hearing about it it was around it was about you know I think it was referred to as a five-point facelift which it isn't as you say it is essentially um, makes the skin look incredible doesn't it yeah. rather than with, um lifting or um uh, freezing yeah. you know as other injectables it do. can feel like is it's it, lifting, is it but it's just not i don't think it's yeah. correct to say that it's lift it's a lift so you can get yeah when you look at the skin and it's incredible it does has an appearance of it being lifted um and that's because the collagen and elastin have been stimulating it and the skin's hydrated but sorry i interrupted that but yeah no, 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 that's great. Is it good for um, uh, like sort of crepey skin? It's perfect, well? Is that ideal, a... ideal, yeah. ideal. And it's great for the neck as well. It's 10 points in the neck as well. Um, it's uh, downtime is about a day. So if you imagine you're kind of putting these deposits of this gel in these five key areas that are des that, 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 that they're designed there because they're safe to put there, but also the spread from those five points um, will coat the skin beautifully and lift in, I said, see, I just said lift, and will tighten the skin um, in that area. And same with the neck. So um, they're sort of design protocols uh, beforehand. Um, and really, re really, really nice. If, you're, if anyone's on here and they're scared to try the toxins and they're scared to try the fillers, this is a treatment for you. Um, any profile or any of the skin boosters. There's an excellent one called Redensity One. 
which is hyaluronic acid. Again, it's not stuck together, but it's also got vitamins. It's like a meso, and that gives a really beautiful also skin glow. So I think the, the redensity one, the profilos, those treatments are the ones for beginners who just want to dip their toe in it, and they're not permanent. And if you don't like it, you never do it again. No one's going to figure it out. Um, you know, you're just going to look, you're just going to look really, really, really just fresh. Yeah. Oh, oh that's amazing. Like that. I mean, that's all we want, especially, I can imagine that being quite a popular treatment when everyone comes out of lockdown. Um, so let's do the lower part of the face now, because that's a huge topic. Um, what could you do around this lower face? Would you use toxins? Would you use um, fillers? And what are the sort of common concerns that you get asked around this area? I think I think when we talk about Sarah, the first thing we have to obviously talk about is lips because that's just I mean that, right. that yes, that's not course. moving momentum. That's the lips are not moving momentum. But I think that I think that we're understanding now. Maybe not understanding. I'm, I think that with the end of keeping up with the Kardashians, so has that sort of look, um, and we're sort of taking yeah. it right back to basics and and to looking at people's lips, everyone's lips are unique. Like, my most frustrating consultation is someone comes in with a picture of someone's lips and says, I want these, and their, their mouth doesn't look like that. And even if I gave them those lips, it wouldn't look right. You have to, you have to be respectful of someone's natural aesthetic. So, and, and the fillers have come a long way um, now, and, and, and they are watery now, so you can put a very light fill in the lip just to look like you've got to put a gloss, and you can volumize a fair bit. But I think, I think the lips are obviously still uh, you know, the number one filler area that everyone thinks about, you know, you don't hear temple fillers, you don't hear, you always hear lip no. fillers. So, you know, they, they kind of come as, as two words together. Um, so lips are an area that, um, you know, what happens as we get older, as time passes, um, is this area <laughs> here gets um, longer and the, the, the lip kind of turns in. We used to think that you lost volume, but we don't. Now what happens is it kind of turns in. So the white part of the lip becomes longer. The lip almost turns its way in. So you haven't lost your lip. It's just that it's kind of tucked in almost. So a, a, a good aesthetic practitioner can, can fill it up enough just to turn it up a little bit, but again, staying true to your natural lip shape and contour. So that's that's what we do with lip fillers now. Hyaluronic acid is the treatment of choice in this area. Um, again, as with all fillers, we'll talk about safety afterwards. Um, um, it's really, really popular, but also the lines around the mouth. So let's talk about smokers lines which yeah. by the way are not unique to smokers. In fact, many non-smokers have them. Um, and these are the lines that, that happen above the but actually you can sometimes get them under the lip. Um, you can treat them with, with, with toxin, very small droplets of toxin. Um, it's okay. Um, it's not my favorite because um, I think that although it looks fine, I think people sometimes feel that they're talking, they feel that that's how they're talking, but they're not. Um, and they're kind yeah. of drinking, um, you know, it, it's, it's sipping from a spoon or Loving. from a straw, like just feels a bit funny sometimes. So it's not the, my favorite. If you have a look, you have to obviously assess again, case by case basis. But if you have a look at the skin around here, if it's that they've lost a bit of volume, is it that they've lost some fat in that area? Well, then you can put again, a watery filler, a resilient hyaluronic acid, the stretchy one. You could fill in tiny little strips in that area and just bring those lines forward a little bit. Again, small amounts, right amount um you don't want that um so that's that's something that you can do with fillers um around here um and how long would those um fillers tend to last how long is your lip filler effect going to to, to last for it's a really really good question because areas that have more movement don't seem to hold filler as much as others so so filler underneath the eyes for example just seems to last an eternity Whereas filler around the mouth, it's a highly mobile area. We're always chewing our lips. We're drinking hot drinks. We're kissing, doing whatever you do. And, um, you know, th these, these lip fillers are sensitive to a, you know, to a lot of movement or in, in very dynamic areas. So the newer technologies do last. So they're not, it's not that they're going to be gone in a week. They're, you know, you're looking at six to nine months, depending on the brand that you okay. use. Um, but again, person to person variation is important. Some people just seem to churn through that stuff. Um, and some people will come back a year later and it's still sitting there in a product that, you know, I told them would last six to nine months and it's very much there. So I think that's definitely uh, an individual, uh, it's an individual case by case basis on how long. Well, it's nice to know also that, you know, um, if you go down the lip filler route, it doesn't need to look overly obvious um, or like you've had a lip job, which, you know, is it often the bad, the sort of bad cases of filler you see are around the lip area. Yeah. Um, so that's great. And in terms of um, kind of, um, jowls or kind of yeah. the chin. Oh yeah, left chin. of the chin. chin. So, so, so the chin, 
Um, and, and everyone look at their parents and pictures of their parents, if you can find any pictures. But what happens over time is this kind of starts to do that. And so you start to see this kind of line going across here, but also you kind of get this, this cobblestone effect. You start seeing people talk in this kind of, I mean, I have, you can't say because I've got my style over it, but you kind of get this kind of puckering like this, this uh, orange peely effect. And you, the chin becomes quite mobile and it starts to slowly shorten and turn up. So you get these, um, a line across there. So one thing that you can do there is actually target it directly and put some filler along here. Um, you can actually put some toxin in the chin to stop it moving so much. So, so um, one of the things that I say is when, when, when you go in and you're having your sort of your, your toxin three areas, have a chat with your doctor. It's just another area. Have a little bit put in your chin if it's mobile. Um, you may not know or see what it's doing immediately, but what you're actually doing is slowly weakening in a bit because over time it will start to turn up. Um, and so you're kind of almost, that's almost preventative as it were. Um, so that's something that you can do with the, with the, with the chin. Another thing that you can do with, with Botox is over time, you can feel that the corners of the mouth are kind of turning down. Mm. And there's a muscle that starts from the corner of the mouth and it attaches to the jaw. And that muscle can be relaxed a tiny bit with, with, with toxins so that the, the corners of the mouth go up, not like the joker, like just so it's just kind of a bit more horizontal. Um, it won't go up, don't worry, but it, it, it does <laughs> the pulling down effect. So that's something that you can do. Jowls, I, I, I'm looking slightly to the side on jowls. So jowls are really, really interesting because we, our understanding of jowls has changed a lot. Um, and we used to think that, you know, your face is going down and that's, that's all it is, right? So that we just thought that's what jowls were. But actually what's happening is, is if you think of your face as like a duvet or like a quilt, right? And so each of those sections of the stitches of the padding or whatever is fat. And, and, and as time passes, some of that fat gets bigger and some of that fat gets smaller, which explains, explains the changes in the face. So this area, this sausage bit of fat gets bigger as you get older, which is why that also contributes to the nasolabial. But I digress. Back to here. What you have is, I'm gonna use this guy. You have a ligament right here and you have a ligament just behind it. And that attaches the skin to the bone. In between that is one of your cushions and that fat gets bigger as you get older. So what's happened is this fat compartment here is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but it's being held almost like a hammock by these two ligaments, which are attached to the bone. And so fat kind of starts to sense. So that's why when you look at jaw lines, you feel that it's, I, I can't seem to do this. I'll do it on this. You feel that it kind of does that and then it drops a bit, right? So you yeah. it, it drops that way. And that's because that, that fat Department is being suspended by the ligaments and is getting bigger. So, I am getting somewhere with this. God, you're such you know, but it's fascinating <laughs> because you're explaining it <laughs> so well. I'm learning sense. so much, honestly. So what you do is is you don't touch that fat. You stay well away from it. What you do is you work behind it and in front of it. So what you're doing is you're putting a tiny bit of filler right along that jawline and right in front of it to almost make, I don't have any props here, to, to, to conceal that, but do you know what I mean? So if it's hanging like that and then sort of everything kind of gets dropped down. So that bit of volume is kind of lost in that new jawline. So you're essentially moving the jawline down a little bit. A, a, a point to add to that is I do think you should have a little bit of cheek volume as well because that will lift it a bit as well. So you're kind of concealing from here and a tiny bit of a lift from here as well. So that's what you can do with jawline. Jawline filler is so huge at the moment. People mm. love jawline filler, um, but it's important when you do look at before and afters. I mean, I don't really have before and afters on my Instagram because I'm, I'm scared of younger audiences seeing them. They're on my website. But when you do look at these Instagram quick before and afters, remember you're always up seeing them like this. Right, so it always looks great, yeah. but you need a picture that looks like this, right? Because if you're adding volume here, you need to be very careful in a, in a, in a feminine face um, that doesn't want to be masculinized to not add volume here because that will masculinize it. And, 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 and so, so things to think about. The newer fillers, again, the resilient hyaluronic acids are very good, good at that, but it's still something to think about when you sort of, um, you know, when you're looking at jawline fillers. So that's an important thing. Another thing that contributes to the jowls is, and I've got some really good ones. Look, <laughs> see, see those those bands that oh, now now that I'm trying to show them, that you can't see them. Is that why you're wearing this? Yeah, polo neck. But you see yeah. those bands that kind of come down your neck um, that become a bit more obvious as you're older. They that it's it's a platysma muscle, so it starts here um, in the jawline and it goes all the way down to your collarbone, and it kind of bunches up and creates these kind of bands, and all of those bands are tugging 
and also adding to the jawline. So one of the things that you can do in the neck is actually inject Botox in up each of those bands. So all the way up. And what that will do is it will weaken that muscle's ability to tug at the jawline. And so you get this really nice, it's called the Nefertiti neck lift because she was, you know, the best neck embodied in a human being. And so, um, so, 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 um, so the Nefertiti neck lift is essentially blocking everything that's pulling down. Um, and so when you do that, you get this kind of a lift effect. That's so clever. I, I mean, I just, it, <laughs> it's amazing because it, um, it really shows how everything is so linked, you know, by doing, you know, you just wouldn't imagine by putting toxins in your neck is, is going to sort of help to lift the jowl yeah. area. I mean, it's incredible. Um, I did leave something out. And so, Sorry, it's sorry. The last thing I left out. I'm really sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. When, when, when people grind their teeth, so this could be teeth grinding, mm. it could be ethnicity, um, but you can get these kind of big, bulky muscles either side here. Now, some people like them, but if you find that your your face is a bit squarer and perhaps you want to have a more heart-shaped face, um, one of the things that you can do is actually put toxin into the muscles. Those, those. So if you bite down. And you can feel that muscle uh, bulging out. When you put toxin into that, that yeah. will weaken that muscle. It's not going to weaken it so much that you know, you're walking around with your mouth hanging out, but it will soften it a bit that that muscle over time will start to shrink and your face will kind of achieve a slightly more heart shaped face. So that was the other thing before we moved down. And, and, and I was. That's really interesting. That's fascinating. So, um, what would be great is if we could kind of touch on um, uh, injectables for men uh -huh. um, in a, just a, in a very sort of broad um, way. Where would you, um, how would you change that treatment for kind of any part of the face um, for a man? Because obviously you, you're treating the faces yeah. very differently uh, so, for a female. So, so for example, what, do you mean in all the different parts from, from top to uh, yeah. Well, essentially it would be, it would be great to kind of um, touch on broadly speaking, kind of what you could do to re refresh yeah. the upper part of the face and also the lower part of the face. So, so I think, I think with forehead lines, I don't think it's, I think that men should have them personally. I think we can kind of soften, I call it resting, resting man face. So that, that kind of happens. <laughs> and, and, and so I think that that can be softened a fair bit, but I don't think we should be too obsessed with moving. You can soften them, but certainly that, that sort of, that loss, of, uh, of any expression is a no-no for men, and, 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 I, and I try to dissuade everyone from doing that. I definitely think this is an area that can be treated. I think these are quite charming, um, but I think that they can be softened a bit if they get too deep. I, you know, I think expressions are so important, so I think that you can keep um, the lines here. So I think with men, I think the trick is the same tricks apply. Um, I just diluted a bit more. I think um, you know certain areas like you know lips. You'll never you, you'll never live down Freddie Fish lips if you, if, if if it's too obvious. Um, <laughs> Botox, you know, Botox around, sorry, fillers around the jawline. Yes, there's a bit more leeway because, you, you know, it's okay to add more volume here because it's, it's in keeping with a, with a traditionally male aesthetic. So, so you, can, um, you can sort of put the volume here. Um, other than that, they're not too far off. They're not too far off. I mean, the requirements for men are slightly different. I mean, the, the brief is always, don't let anyone know that I've had anything done. Um, whereas with women, sometimes it can be like, I really want to have a beautiful cheekbone and I want to see it and this and that. So, so, so the, the briefs are always slightly different. And I think men are always sort of veering towards subtle, undetectable work um, that just, that, that they just want to look refreshed. It's not about beautification. They just want to look rested. Yeah, that's incredible. So um, let's touch on safety because obviously it's a huge aspect of what you do. And um, the reason why, you know, you are such an excellent doctor and part of our beauty school is because you know you're very rigorous when it comes to um uh, being a responsible doctor essentially when it comes to injectables which i think is so so important so if um any of our audience are thinking of booking in with a practitioner what are the sort of steps that they should take beforehand i mean it's 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 tricky isn't it i, I th it's always a hard question for this one because I know that in, in the UK, it's a very poorly regulated industry. And we know that, yes. we know that, you know, surprising facts are things like anyone can inject Botox. Like you, there's, there's no law to say that you can't, you can't prescribe it. Um, but, but, and anyone can get fillers, you can get them online. So there's a, there's a real, um, problem in, in, in the, in the UK. And I used to always think, oh, when, when this really horrific case is going to happen and someone gets blinded or, or, you know, 
then regulations will change. But we've all seen them. Like we've all seen these horror. I mean, yeah. they're everywhere. You can see the the, the, the disaster cases and you know the, the the times when filler has gone into arteries and had some nasty consequences at times. Um, you know. Thankfully, none of them permanent, um, but there can be the occasional permanent problem. So I think you have to remember that this is your face. And I think one of the things to always think about is, is I find I find it astounding sometimes that people what people will spend um, on, on a haircut, with, but they won't do it on their face. Like people's, it's incredible. It's really fascinating yeah. people's psyche. And I think it's just not an area um, to, for, for the part of your body that's the most visible, it's not an area to sort of, you know, look for deals and this and that. So the first thing I would say is, you need to find someone who is trained, right? And by, by that, I mean a, a, a doctor, a dentist, a nurse. I mean, the, the, the people who have worked in the field, um, who have good study of anatomy. Um, more importantly, someone who, you know, should, I don't want to swear, should something go very, very wrong, that person can correct the problem and is able to prescribe the solution. Because sometimes yeah. what happens is, you know, and, and I'm not just saying this to scare anyone, but one of the consequences of fillers or fillers injecting the wrong place is that it can cause a, a reduced blood supply to a part of the face, right? And this is, this is for all intents and purposes, horrible. And it's a medical emergency and it needs to be dissolved, right? So who's gonna, who's gonna treat that for you? Every minute counts. You need to know someone who is going to know what they're doing because the longer you leave it, the more the problem is gonna be difficult to reverse. So I think, Three things to look at. If you're looking for doctors, make sure that they're GMC registers. That's the General, General Medical Council. Um, and you can go onto their website. You can type in the doctor's name and you'll see um, that they're registered. If it's a dentist, it's going to be the GDC, the General Dental Council. And if it's a nurse, it's the NMC, um, the, 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 the Nursing Council. And, and I, I say that with the proviso. I'm not saying that someone who... I'm, I'm just going to take an example, right? So, so, so someone who is a nail technician, right? I'm not saying to you that that person does not have a better artistic eye than me or any doctor. So, so don't, just because you're a doctor, it doesn't mean you have an artistic eye or an, an understanding of aesthetics. They don't teach you at a medical school. So that's yeah. not what I'm saying. And I'm not disrespecting anyone's ability to say this is good work, this bad work. We, you know, we all, we are all able to, 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 to make that decision. And, and, and there is a lot of talent out there. I think the concern is when something goes wrong, what is going to happen then? And that's when you don't want to be playing around with your face. And that's why, you know, the first thing to do is to see that someone is, um, is registered. There are other sort of um, lists that are out there. Um, people do, the, do a lot of the research for you. So you've got things like there's, a, there's Safe Face is one of the companies that does a lot of lobbying uh, for safer practice. You have, um, there's a, the JCCP is another uh, uh, organization that these are voluntary registers. But they are, you know, they're, they're quite good to, to have a check. Um, CQC is, is a system that goes and checks um, clinics and makes sure they're up to scratch and their protocols are up to scratch. So, so those are the things that you can do. But also look at their training. I mean, I, I'm going to do a shameless plug now. Um, I founded the London Academy of Aesthetic Medicine, um, and it's, it's, it's a school alongside Dr. Sheila Nguyen and Dr. Tara Francis, and we teach all these procedures, and we are militant about who leaves and who gets certified, and they have to have every single thing ticked crossed before we let them pass. And I think the training, I mean, you'd be surprised how people are doing it without training in place. So, um, so that's important too. Um, Alice Hart Davis has the tweakments um, guide. I think, I think she's great as well because she, she spent a lot of time having the treatment. So it's, it's not sort of a company coming around saying, oh, well, you know, you know what to do when there's a fire alarm or you know what to do. It's like, it's actually someone who's first hand tried it. So she has a tweakments, um, tweakments guide online. That's another uh, great resource. Um, but before and after, speak to doctors, look for reviews. I mean, the best, the best, best is word of mouth, right? It still is. It still yeah. is word of mouth. Like it beats any Instagram find or any sort of landing on a website. It's, it's someone that your friend has seen who can vouch for it and you've seen the work. Yeah, that's really, that's really I mean, <laughs> it, it, it tells you though, doesn't it? You can kind of, um, as we've sort of mentioned, you can spot bad work a mile off and, and kind of know that you don't want that. But it's kind of um, pinpointing the, the natural looks that you can go for. Um, I'm just going to take um, go over to a few of our questions. Um, so we've had Don't a couple of questions the about. <laughs> <laughs> we've had um, yeah, he's he's very popular. What is the skeleton's name? Should we name him? Do you, do you have, I think we should name I, him. I think best name, please. Pop, pop your entry. <laughs> I should, I should yes, best name. Wow. 
Um, so we've had a few um, questions about thread lifts. Yes. Now, um, I know thread lifts are kind of, um, again, one of those quite popular treatments, um, and it sort of goes up and down in popularity. Um, what are your thoughts on, on thread lifts? So, so, be very uh, so thread lifts is, is quite a broad, uh, broad uh, title. So um, within the category of thread lifts, there's two main players. And you have something called pedio threads. And these are threads that were traditionally used in surgery. So they're, they're, they're threads that you sort of suture sort of organs when you're doing surgery, and they eventually, um, they eventually dissolve, right? And so these are very popular in Korea. Um, and these are sort of, in, uh, sort of inserted in a needle. So the thread, so that's the needle and the threads inside it. You put it into the skin, you pull the needle out and the thread stays inside. The idea is, and with a lot of these treatments is you're creating, it creates collagen. So this, this kind of, this thread, it's going to stimulate collagen around it. So that's your PDO threads. PDO threads are really, really nice. They create nice results in the skin. Um, and now they're sort of, they're, they're, they used to be sort of individual sort of ones. Now you have sort of barbed ones, cogged ones, uh, ones that are better at pulling. Um, so there's, they, they, they progress and, and they can be very, very good. So I'm, I am a fan of PDO threads. I do like them. Um, I'm not, we will go back to Fox Eye. Remind me to talk about Fox Eye later. We're going to talk about trans yeah. I hope we will, we will we'll go away. Um, and then you have the other type of threads, which are things like silhouette soft, and these are suspension threads. So this is a longer thread, which has almost, and whenever I say this, everyone kind of goes, but these kind of little knots in it, okay, which you don't feel. But when, when this thread is injected, it's slightly longer, and as, as it's injected, into the, it's inserted, sorry, into the skin, and you pull it back, those little hooks almost as they were, they're not hooks, but they're kind of sort of cones, um, will, will hold, slowly lift the skin as you pull it up. And so you have several of these put into the skin, um, really, really nice as well. Um, they stimulate collagen. They again, also dissolve over time. So they kind of work slightly differently. One is much more a lifting one, I would say, and one is much better for skin quality, although both kind of somewhere in there, they both do this as well. There's a crossover, but one is, I would say more ideal um, for, for one thing than the other. Um, really popular. Um, I do find that on their own, um, I prefer sort of combination treatments. So I, I would probably, if I was going to do threads with someone, I would probably work on their skin as well. So it might be in the form of profile, it might be in the form of, of fillers. Um, it might be sort of some of the newer fillers that stimulate collagen, like there's one called Elance, which is quite good. So I, I find combination treatments when it comes to threads prove to be a little bit more satisfying. Um, I don't do them as much um, as I used to. Um, I, I, Maybe I'm just not known as the threads doctor um, because I know people are doing them a lot. So they're really, really popular. And what is what is the fox eye? And yeah. I'm very hesitant to even I, the the fact of the fact of there being even trends in injectables is quite scary to me as a journalist. But um, what what are what is the fox eye trend? Yeah, I mean, why does everyone look the same? First of all, like that's that's my biggest bugbear. But um, what what fox I mean, eye is 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 um, so this was a did she or didn't she moment where where Bella Hadid and some of the 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 the, 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 the big model girls at the moment were sort of have which way that way their eyebrows are sort of a bit like this, right? Like a fox. Some call it cat eye. Um, and it was a has she hasn't she had um a thread lift or had threads put in there or had surgery like at one point so it wasn't even necessary like we've just assumed that it's threads or that you know that kind of that story gained momentum it could have been surgical it could have been nothing you no know, she could have done nothing guys and they could just be drawing her eyebrows on like that so that like the most <laughs> obvious things never cross anyone's mind um it's always like you know so so and what what that what, what they're doing with this is, is is you're inserting threads into this area and you're pulling the skin and holding it up okay I, I pray this, this fad will not last um, because I, I don't, one, I, I don't think it suits everyone. Um, mm. I think that it's not people who have sort of lower eyelids that are doing it. It's younger girls who are wanting to emulate this look. That the, the fox eye is not popular with your 40 plus. It's popular with your 20s and, and even younger. And so I think having threads put in at a very young age like that, I don't think it's, it's ideal. And, and, I, and I hope that the thread will just go away. I, the thread, the trend um, will, will go away. Um, it doesn't suit everyone. Sometimes I feel the skin looks a little bit like it's taut. Um, it just, and, I, and I don't think that they last. Most importantly, I just don't think that they last. And uh, it's quite a fair bit. There's a lot of anatomy going on here to have sort of threads mm. put in. 
um, in that area. Not that they don't work, I'm just, I, personally, I'm not a fan. And I know many colleagues of mine do it and they get great, great results. But for me personally, um, it, it's, it's not a trend that I hope stays around. Well, that's great, honestly, because it is about kind of just looking subtly more refreshed, you know, ultimately. Um, we're asking, um, I think we're, we're, we are running out of time. Honestly, I could speak to you all evening. <laughs> um, I'm going to, I've got two more points just to touch on. So, um, Sue, thank you for asking about the Morpheus 8. Um, we have covered that in a previous session of Telegraph Beauty School with um, Neelam Holmes. Um, we've covered that quite extensively, but um, actually one thing to flag because I know the Morpheus 8 has been in the press massively. I've written about it extensively because um, Judy Murray had the Morpheus 8 treatment and Dr. Judy, jo D Dr. Judy Dodd, who did um, Judy's treatment, is actually going to be working with Dr. Wasim Taktuk <laughs> in his clinic come April time. So actually, all of your Morpheus 8 um, you know, solutions will be solved by... Um, within your clinic as well, Dr. Yeah, Wasim, wouldn't absolutely, they? Absolutely, absolutely. So that was, I mean, I, I, I have the biggest gob in the world. My friends call me BMW, Big Mouth Wasim. And I had to keep that story quiet from last year um, until, it came, until it came out. So it was really great that it, 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 it was so explosive. Um, but it shows that, I mean, it was incredible yeah, results. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's, it's fantastic that, um, you know, Dr. Judy will be at the Taktuk clinic. Yes, yeah. Um, when it we when it opens um, mid April, um, and so one thing I really want to know is actually you know what skincare do you use because obviously when it comes to injectables, you still want a really nice you still want really nice skin to work with and how important is the skin? I think it's actually the most important. I think that, and I think I've told you this before, like if 10 people came into a room, the one with the great skin is the one that's gonna stick out to me. It's not gonna be the one that doesn't have wrinkles. I think your skin is such a yeah. reflection of your health. And I think that, um, you know, even good skin, which has lines in it is beautiful. So I think that, sorry, I know that sounds really naff, but 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 I do think no, that, that, that healthy glowing skin <laughs> Is, is key and um, you know you and I are, are fortunate we get to try a lot of skincare along along the way and um, and and certainly there are things that I feel have stuck um, things that that I, I, I like a lot um, and I think um, do you want me to list them is that is yes please please I want to know what's in your wash bag I mean, I'm not going to pretend I'm shocked by this question we didn't have this plan so I do have them here um, but, um, <laughs> So, so um, here's one I brought out earlier. So, um, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, at the moment, so these are the things that I'm digging at the moment. So, um, this is this is Exuviance Gentle Cleansing Cream because my skin is very dry at the moment. I used to use the foaming cleansers a lot, and this one is very good now with the cold weather and the central heating. My skin's a bit drier. This is my number one when it comes to. Um, I, can you see? Yeah, um, skincare. Yes. Um, I do a lot on Instagram, by the I'm way. I do. Notes. I'm just going to quickly just tell the audience we are sending all of these um, products with links yeah. in the email tomorrow. So don't worry about scribbling them all down. Sorry to no interrupt, Dr. Wasim. No Carry on. So that's um, and, and that's a, that's a really really nice one. Um, this has been like my favorite for a very 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 long time. Oh, I um, love that yeah, one. Yeah, this is this is this is the best I think on the um, alpha hydroxy acid sort of exfoliator, um, and you rub it on your face um, gently. Not, crazy um with a with a cotton pad and it just makes your skin luminous it looks so healthy um and it's i, I don't know if the orange tinge has something to do with it but my skin always looks really really glowing after i love that one um really really um, reasonably priced as well so that's that's my aha um one um this is my number one skin uh, moisturizer that i use this is full of ceramides triple lipid restore if you don't follow me on instagram i do these one minute videos where i explain what the ingredients are so i kind of went to town with they are amazing. but this is a really really good moisturizer it's got the right um our skin needs lipids in it and it's got the right breakdown of, of fatty acids and cholesterol um, and ceramides in it and it's really really good for your skin it's a great barrier for your skin so that's that's a really really good one for me um my other hero product which i love love is um this zeo it's this exfoliating polish um not often you mustn't scrub your face often but when you do this one just, just always smells so clean you tried this it's amazing anyway that's yeah that, i love that i love that one it's a good and i actually ran out of my last one which is which is a retinol that i that i use and it's it's uh, it's by medicaid it's called r retino 8 intent it comes in a, in a black pump um, i've run out so i'm using their their crystal retinol 10 which is um which is uh, which way 
um, which is a, a really good one. Medicaid are really, really good. They have a really good range of, of all of those brands, by the way, that I've mentioned are excellent. Um, and, and, and I'm speaking from firsthand experience I, 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 that they sort of, um, I use them daily. So um, those are my favorites. Amazing. Oh, it's so great to hear actually what a cosmetic doctor uses in his own wash bag because, um, you know, like we say, it, the, the skin is the best foundation for good injectables, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. And if you do nothing except look after your skin, you're already winning. And, 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 and yeah. the disclaimer to all this is that you don't have to do any of these treatments. We're not here to push treatments on anyone or make anyone feel they need to do these treatments, but we're just having a sort of a, a, a session. session. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, it's, it's really, um, if you're going to go down the injectables route, um, it's best to be really well informed. So that's what this session is all about. And on that note, Dr. Wasim, honestly, I'm had I've had the best hour. We've been speaking for a whole hour. Okay. It's been so fantastic. Um, and I know that actually, you know, the audience was so um, are so fascinated by everything you were saying. It's so informative. Um, and also, you know, also I love the fact that you kind of debunk the fact that injectables need to look really obvious and you know they don't. They don't. And also the fact that you don't need them. Sometimes it's best to not have them all together. Absolutely. Um, which is very refreshing to hear from someone who um, whose trade is injectables. Um, so that's so fantastic. And actually, Dr. Wasim um, Clinic will be reopening on the 12th April 12. of April. Are you getting ready for that? I am. I am. I'm nervous, but I'm excited. Yeah. It feels very grown up. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm sure your your books are going to be brimming full from April 12. Um, so all is left for me to say is thank you so thank much, you Dr. Wasim. I've had an excellent session with you, and thank you so much for joining us in Telegraph Beauty School. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.